And now it's a great pleasure that I introduce your speaker today. He is a son of Kansas and he's coming back to speak to us. Mr. Greg Case graduated summa cum laude from Kansas State University and then he went on to earn an MBA at the Harvard Business School. He became the CEO of Aon Company in two, Incorporation in 2005 and his record of success is clear. Under his leadership, He's led Aon, and it's just a small little company, you might not have heard of it, it's only $18 billion in market cap. It only has 59,000 employees, and now it's moved to number one market position in risk, reinsurance, and human resources business. For anyone who knows uh, soccer well, you know the Manchester United Football Club, Along the front of their uh, jerseys, they have the company name of Aon. And I'll tell you, I wasn't expecting to show this, but uh, here's what it looks like. He brought me one today. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Greg's leadership style can best be described as he does whatever it takes to help his colleagues at Aon succeed. And I think he underscores that effort by really being a, a person that you can model. He works tirelessly to see at least 100 clients a month, and that's all over the world. And while he's visiting those clients, he also tries to stop in and meet with his colleagues. Now, just imagine those frequent flyer miles that we might all have if we did that. For nearly two decades, he has had experience both in the insurance and the financial services industries in what he, before coming to AI. One of the things that I've liked about him and I've gotten to know both in reading and then talking to him today is he is a true leader. He not only leads in the business world, but he's a giver. He's a doer and a giver. And he's demonstrated that through his involvement in Chicago and a number of organizations from Children's uh, Memorial Hospital to
And so it's within a hundred and nineties. Uh, I'm going to try to follow the, the words of a former Kansas Senator Bob Doyle, who, when asked for advice about a commencement speech, said, um, "Be brief, be sincere, and be seated." Um, to those graduating today, I stand here before you uh, to say that as years pass, if you allow yourself to fully observe the spirit and the vision of Baker, I believe that the memories of the time you spent here will always be a rich and important part of your life. I urge all of you, I urge all of you to take part in this day. Thank you to the families for their love and support. Thank you to those who helped you make this all possible during your time in Baker. Make sure you celebrate this tremendous achievement. You are entitled. You're entitled. This is your day. Graduation day is probably called commencement because it's both the completion of one phase of your life and the beginning of another. And while I hope you look back with pleasure on your time at Baker, I know that with you, all of you, are looking toward the future. A future that perhaps uh, seems a bit risky and it's uncertain. But let me assure you that it also offers you great expectation and great opportunity. For my part, I'd like to offer for your consideration five observations. Five observations I've made in my travels around the world. Now, I'm sure you won't, but please don't, uh, don't view these as gospel or truth. Uh, rather, these are just observations, graduates. Observations of others who I've seen around the world have great success and great impact across multiple countries and around many parts of the world. Interestingly, though, the lessons I'm going to summarize are remarkably similar. They're remarkably similar irrespective of the country I was in, the culture, the industry, no matter where I've been. Whether it's been in Singapore, or London, or Sao Paulo, or Spain, or Kansas City, all places I've been very recently, uh, these lessons rang true. So use them as you see fit. Hopefully they'll provide some insight for you as you shape your personal game plan for the next day of your life. The first observation. Do your best to make sure you understand the big picture. Understand the big picture. From my point of view, it's perfectly right for you to take as broad a view as you possibly can as you shape your life and what you hope to achieve. You should always think big. Always think big. In the last five years, I have had the privilege of working personally in over 30 countries in a firm that serves over 120 countries around the world. Virtually every company with size and shape, big, little, and small. And as far as I'm concerned, based on what I've seen, very, very clearly around the world, all of you, all of you have the opportunity to compete in every market in the world. I am quite confident that President Obama and the faculty are prepared to move beyond the walls of Baylor University, beyond the borders of Kansas and Missouri, beyond the boundaries of this great nation. Anywhere you want to go, you can be. Take a big picture approach to your life. You might like what you see. Don't misunderstand. Living and working in Kansas City, or Topeka, or Wichita, would be a great privilege and a great quality. But approach these destinations with a full understanding of the broader context and the big picture. Second observation. Second observation. Keep investing in yourself. Every one of us spends part of our life going to school, you know it well. And then we start to think about work. You've been able to intertwine us. In essence, we think about investing in ourselves, school, and then we think about maybe going to work because we're going to work in our profession. I encourage you. I encourage you to reject completely this common temptation. Have a clear game plan on how you're going to keep investing in yourself. The longer you continue to build on your capabilities as a person, whether it's in your business or your personal life, the greater person you're going to become. Regardless of your age, regardless of your age and position, the more you invest in yourself and your ability to grow, the stronger you're going to look at the big picture and pursue your dreams. And personally, I love what Professor Long said. I celebrate this group. I celebrate that everyone in this graduating class has already made a decision to invest in yourself and go beyond the traditional norm. I encourage you to continue to do that throughout your entire life. Third observation. There is no substitute for excellence. Whatever you decide to do in life, understand what it means to be the best. It doesn't matter what it is. What are you doing? What does it mean to be great in that area, in that arena? And build your skills to be the best. For a lawyer, it might be the middle of the night to an understanding case you can live the next day. You know, for a teacher, it might be the middle of the make sure the lessons truly are compelling to the class. Whatever it is to make a difference, that's what you're trying to do. No matter what you choose to do in life, it boils down to commitment. You know that. 
Life is challenging, but if you're willing to put in the time and effort to do whatever it takes, trust me. Trust me, you're going to like the results. Next observation, fourth observation. Don't be afraid to fail. Some failure in life is inevitable. Everybody here today has experienced it in some way. Someone should perform the last minute. It's impossible to go out there something. Unless you move so cautiously that you might as well not move at all. In that case, you feel a lot of fault. Failure teaches us all something different. Some might find that a strong will to succeed and be fighting like that. Others might find that a sudden sense of discipline that have killed through the tough times. Many of our heroes, many people who have truly made the world what it is today, would have made the world a better place, but failed numerous times along the way in their path to success. The beauty of failure is knowing that you will more surely and wiser than you ever thought possible. You'll become even more secure in your ability to survive and to prosper. And this is going to fuel the fire of persistence and provide you with perspective as you face life's challenges. Remember, the world's full of smart, talented people. Yet those people often are frustrated and for some reason they just can't put the pieces together and solve the success equation. Those who are persistent, they know better. The fifth and final observation is going to seem a little counterintuitive because after all, this day is about all of you. But the fifth and final observation is around investing as much in others as you invest in yourself. The best advice I ever received was simple and direct. Don't obsess about your own agenda. Help others succeed. No matter what kind of work you're in, what you decide to pursue, you're going to learn a great deal from leaders in watching and helping them succeed. It's all about understanding the opportunity before you and how you can help your colleagues, help your colleagues succeed in that context. To do this, you've got to have a passion for what you're doing. You've got to be a great listener, as opposed to a great, as to a great talker. And you've got to care about others. I will tell you, graduates, this is a trait that is universal. I have never seen a great leaders that didn't have this trait. In closing, as you can play a little later, I can assure you there's an opportunity waiting for you beyond the boundaries of this wonderful campus, this virtual campus. Don't let anyone, don't let anyone persuade you that the best is behind you. On the contrary, you're going to have an opportunity to play that reach you far beyond anything you've ever known. It's going to be how you respond to them that's going to be the, the tale of your future. That's what's going to dictate it. Are you going to look at the big picture? Are you going to look at the big picture? Are you going to keep investing in yourself? Will you remember that there's no substitute for excellence? Will you not be afraid to fail? And will you invest in as much in others as you do in yourself? Only you and you alone can answer these questions. For some of you, we may have already answered them here today, or at your time of labor. For the rest of you, the answers will not be here today or tomorrow, but perhaps a year or five years from now. That's, that's okay. No matter when you answer them, you're about to start another part of your exciting journey called your life. I will say, uh, history says, uh, and it's true, that not many of you, maybe most of you, you know, you don't remember the words that said it at graduation. It's, it's true. No matter how wise or how, how insightful. Um, I know that, but however, I, I hope you keep in mind these final words that were uttered uh, a number of years ago by a gentleman who was a historic coach of the most successful soccer team of all time, and our president introduced him. Uh, this is Manchester United. This is a soccer club that has over 350 million fans, more than every man, woman, and child in the U.S. At one point, it was a very successful. It was it rose over a period of decades to become the most successful team in the history of sport. And there was a coach, uh, a guy by the name of Sir Matt Busby, who was a coach of that team at one time. And he had a famous saying. So if you remember nothing else, remember the saying. Sir Matt Busby. At United, we strive for perfection. And if we fail, if we fail, we might just have to sell for excellence. I wish all of you the best of luck as you seek to find new level of perfection for you and your families. I wish you safe travels on your way.